Yo soy Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria. Narcos is set in the 1980s with the flair of that era. It depicts the lifestyles of the Colombians and the different classes during that time. The show's well directed and captivating. It's bilingual, with the dialogue mostly in Spanish, but with subtitles that give the viewer a real picture of that era. The show's filled with dominance and power, reflecting the man that the series is about. Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria is what I'd say is the best example of a hands-on Don who carried himself with high esteem and has a persona that emphasizes that. In the series Narcos, we get to see the rise of one, if not the greatest drug lord ever. Brutal and gritty are words that would best describe this intense drama series that highlights the big moments in the Kingpin's life as he goes about creating his legacy. We see the story of a poor boy who rises to become one of the most feared men in Colombia. He's also ranked as one of the wealthiest criminals in history. Join me as we relive the top 10 Narcos moments. Plata. O plomo. Ustedes eligen. El Pablo. In this scene, El Pablo happens to be in one of the vehicles in the convoy that's transporting his contraband items. The convoy is met by a military roadblock that insists on searching the trucks. He clearly shows the true hands of leadership as he confronts the army colonel and identifies each soldier by name, and further urges each one of them to take a gift for their loved ones, who he also confidently refers to by name. Pablo Escobar se le respeta. Los voy a matar a todos. Traitors. Also on this list is the scene where Escobar addresses a group of traitors who are kneeling, hands tied behind their backs, lined up across the floor. Surrounding them are loyal gunmen ready to shoot on command. In the scene, Pablo questions them on the whereabouts of Judy Moncada, the widow of Kiko Moncada. We see a ruthless side of Pablo as he threatens the men by reassuring them of their safety in a sarcastic way by clarifying that they didn't really know who they were working for. Within months after meeting Cockroach, Pablo was establishing the first dedicated narco routes from Colombia to America. Moving on, the next moment on our list is the plane scene where we see Pablo and his family going back home. He carries himself with grace as he walks along the aisle of the plane, acknowledging each member in a relaxed manner. He even serves a few drinks, showing the bond he had between people he considered family. Though his cousin Gustavo is still reluctant on their trip back, he plays along by even discussing the state of their business. <coughs> Gustavo's death. Another top 10 moment is when we're taken through the final events before the death of Gustavo Gaviria, Escamar's cousin and personal think tank. He was the brains behind the Medellin cartel and his death affected Escobar's reign, being that he was close to him just like a brother. Brutality clearly stands out in this scene as the police torture Gustavo before killing him in an effort to get information on the whereabouts of Pablo. The scene ends with the bloody, lifeless body of Gustavo on the floor. Prison Break this moment has to make the list. As we begin the second season with Pablo Escobar escaping from La Catedral after it was invaded by the Colombian National Army. From the conversation of the soldiers, we're shown how the Colombians feared him. As the scene continues, we see how much of a badass Pablo is by declining to turn himself in. He politely declines and just walks past the soldiers. Pablo Escobar feared no one and answered to no one. I mean, who in the hell would think that the seventh richest man in the world would be riding around the trunk of a piece of shit taxi? Man of the people. Later on in the episode, we see Pablo riding around in the trunk of a taxi as he goes to collect money from one of his cash houses. Now, this was a memorable moment. In this scene, Don Pablo is willing to squeeze into the uncomfortable trunk of a car so as to avoid being detected by the police who are on high alert. After the collection... Pablo is met by a group of residents who crowd him with salutations and he responds kindly by giving them some of the money that he had. Clearly Escobar was a man of the people as depicted by the reactions the Colombians had towards him. 
Están ofreciendo 7 millones de dólares por tu cabeza. Y vas acá sentado como un berraco turista. Hiding in plain sight. Another great scene is when Pablo Escobar walks around without anybody noticing him as he's added some weight and grown a beard. He even enjoys some ice cream in the park and reminisces about Gustavo. Here, despite the fact that Pablo is a tough man, he shows an emotional side where we see a very close friendship between him and Gustavo. He goes on to have a conversation with him as if he was there with him. In the end, he admits he does miss him. Okay. Final bow. Another moment to relive is the death of the kingpin that wraps up season two of the series. In this scene, we see Pablo exchange bullets with the Colombian police who'd raided his location and he even manages to gun down two of them. At the end, he's shot dead on the roof at Medellin. The scene is epic and memorable as the kingpin finally bows out. A point to note is that this scene is shot in the exact roof where he died in real life, giving us a chilling image of the fall of Pablo Escobar. The day Pablo went down, the Cali cartel became public enemy number one. And the fact that they helped us bring him down didn't mean shit. Change of strategy. After the death of Pablo Escobar, we're unsure of the series' continuity, but the creators managed to surprise us and we're still hooked to this narcotic drama series. In this scene, we see the Cali cartel, who were Escobar's successors, change strategies by deciding to go against Pablo's ways. Their leader, Gilberto Rodriguez, announces that they'll make a deal with the government for amnesty, as they'll abandon the cocaine business for legitimate businesses. Now, you may argue that their decision might have been influenced by the unyielding measures set by the Colombian police after Pablo's death. Ambassador, I am certain that the Minister of Defense is corrupt and that it doesn't stop there. The next best moment is rolled up into a whole episode as a lot of things come together in episode 9. In this tense episode, we get to learn about the massive wealth of the Cali cartel as well as their reach in the Colombian government. The corruption in the government is now clear to see and we get to learn more about George. His role is well detailed in this episode. Also, we see the refrigerator that sent as a gift to the Cali cartel and this maintains the grit and gore of the show. Though the show fully relies on narration as a way of bringing the viewers on board, it's done so well that the show is still engaging and compelling. We're looking forward to the next season. It promises more thrilling action and intense drama. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and if you want to be up to date with our latest uploads, then don't forget to click the notification button. Just before you go though, remember to check out the Regent Stores, our online shop where you can get some great movie merchandise, accessories and clothing. Click the link in the description to get hold of some amazing gear from your favourite movies, TV shows and anime. I'll see you next time on the TV Regent.